What a charged atmosphere. It is incredible to hear God's people just worship Him because they love Him. That's what you heard this morning. That's the excitement you feel in this place today. It's just the people that loves their Creator giving all to Him. We're honored that every one of you are here today and I I'm especially honored that our mayor has uh, slipped in service with us. I do just want to say this. We've not sat down and had coffee or breakfast yet. and We've done a little messaging back and forth, which is, that's a great way. But I want to say this to Pathway. I don't involve myself politically because I'm an ambassador from another place and that would be election tampering what I will say is this God himself the Bible says at every level of authority and government puts leaders in place so I'm going to say this much when you pass all of those signs all those names you better pray and ask God to show you who is a godly leader because it will affect the quality of your lifestyle where you live. It affects the supernatural and where our true warfare is to have godly leaders. And i done a little bit of creeping on our mayor, our current mayor. And I know he's spirit-filled. I know he's a godly leader. And if I have to tell you who to vote for with that knowledge in your mind, you're not in touch. We want godly leaders. And when they're in office, do your part and make sure they stay there because somebody else is going to do their part and try to remove them. Is that okay, Mayor? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Thank you so much for being here. You can't pay me for that, but maybe just buy me a a donut or something. No, what a great day to see all of you, to be in this house. And I'm going to talk to you about a subject that uh, has been somewhat confusing for some, or controversial is not the right word, but um, denominations have drawn their theoretical lines, theology, on this particular subject and what I'm going to talk to you today about is the subject of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the foundational stones spoken of in Hebrews 6 verses 1 and 2 and if you would like to come to our foundations class on Sunday mornings at 9 we delve into that even further but what I want to talk to you today about is what happens when God breathes. If you'll look at John 14, 16, 17, he said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who will be with you forever. How long will he be with us? That helper is the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it doesn't see or know him. You know him because he lives in you, he lives with you, and he will be in you. So I hope to answer three questions today. I asked my wife. She was raised missionary Baptist in a little town called Lone Oak, Arkansas. We had men ponds, and um, one day we got a pizza hut with buffet, and we thought we were uptown. <laughs> and that's almost about all there is now. There's a Walmart now. But I said, what are some questions someone who was not raised in spirit-filled church would have regarding the Holy Spirit? And here's what I wrote down. I wrote down these three questions. One, who is the Holy Spirit? I want to answer number two. Where does the Holy Spirit come from? And three, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Now, I have heard being raised in church and the pastor's son, I've heard all the debates 
about the Holy Spirit. And some of the things I have recognized is there is a fear concerning the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, that one that says, will I act crazy? Look, there's some crazy in this world, especially in the Pentecostal church. And I grew up there and I was probably one of them at one time. I thought that's how I was supposed to be. Then there's that one that says, I don't understand it, so it isn't for me. That's a popular statement I've heard. To that, I will say just quickly, it's the third step in salvation in being a witness. I would say it's vitally important for all of us on that merit alone. The Holy Spirit, here's one, is not for today. It was only for the apostles. Were the apostles doing anything differently than we're called to do today? Anyone? So why did they get to have him and we don't, if that were true, right? I need more of him to keep me out of Whataburger, to be honest. <laughs> and then there's this one that the enemy has used quite successfully in people's lives. I did not receive a prayer language. And people struggle with that. And that becomes the focus instead of the person of the Holy Spirit. And I want to answer that for you today and show you some things. What is the personal name of the Holy Spirit? You see, the Holy Spirit has his own name. And it's translated in Hebrew, it's Ruah Kadesh. And in the Hebrew Bible and Jewish writings, it refers to the Spirit of Yahweh. Does everyone know who Yahweh is? That is God, our Father, our Creator. And Ruah Kadesh is the spirit of Yahweh. In other words, the breath of God. And it is synonymously used with the term Holy Spirit in biblical terminology. It's a key passage in God's word translation that alludes to this concept. It's found in Psalm 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. What is the breath of God? That's a test, and you passed. The breath here symbolizes God's creative power and life-giving force. And it's associated with the Holy Scripture. Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the earth. And he was just laying there. And the Bible next says, he then blew his breath into the lungs of his creation and at that moment, his creation became a living being. You see, it is the breath of God in your lungs today that gave you life. That is the gift you get at the day you're born from the Father. You don't even know him yet. And he gave you the most important gift you will ever have next to salvation. That is the gift of your breath your life. John 20, 22, after saying this, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus was breathing on his disciples, signifying the imparting of the Holy Spirit. Just as God breathed into man physically, Jesus was breathing the Spirit into man spiritually. What about this Holy Spirit we're talking about today. What is he? Who is he? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 9. He is the giver of spiritual gifts. The evidence of the Spirit's presence is given to each person for the common good of everyone. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak with wisdom. The same Spirit gives another person the ability to speak with knowledge. The Holy Spirit bestows spiritual gifts upon us. Why? For the benefit of all. He enriches us with wisdom, understanding, faith, healing power, prophetic revelation, ultimately serving the unity and growth 
of the church. That is why he gives us spiritual gifts. Did you notice he, he's diverse in what he gives to whom? To some he gives a certain gift. To others he gives another gift. But it is all to collectively benefit everyone. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. And he will only speak from what he hears in heaven. He will not speak out of his own authority. He is often referred to in scripture as the spirit of truth. He's also in Romans 5, 5, the spirit of love. It says God poured his love into our hearts by giving us the Holy Spirit who he has given us. Who gave us the Holy Spirit? God the Father. He's the spirit of power. Acts 1, 8. However, you will receive power. Elbow somebody, wake them up and say, you will receive power. They're not going to know what you're talking about, but it's funny. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And then once you have the power, now this is where us Pentecostals, we got stuck on the power. We like the feeling of the power, but it's the next step is the reason he gave us the power was to go and be witnesses to all the earth. That's why he's giving us that power. It gives a divine potency to your message about him. He is in John 14, 26, the helper and the comforter. He said, however, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything that I have ever told you. John 16, 8, he is the convictor of sin. When that one comes, he will convict the world of sin by God's standards and of his judgment. You see, the Holy Spirit, that word convict, as I have said in previous weeks, that is not a condemning word. Now, if you're messing with the legal system of our land, conviction is not good. But this conviction simply means the Holy Spirit shines a light into our lives and shows us the areas where we are not right with God. You see, he knows if we're not right with God, we are not subject to the protections and the blessings of God. I want him to shine light on sin and prompt me to repent and seek God's forgiveness. He is the guarantor of our inheritance. Ephesians 1, 13, 14. You heard and believed the message of the truth, the good news that he has saved you. In him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. In other words, he is the down payment that guarantees our inheritance until God redeems his own possession. He is our guarantee of heaven. When we are saved, we are marked, as I told you last week, with the Holy Spirit. And when God looks at you, he sees his mark. He knows, just as me, a cattle rancher, looks at a marked cow with my brand, I know that's my cow, even in the herd of many cattle. And everyone else recognizes that brand as someone else's. And that is how you are viewed in the supernatural, spiritual realm. You are marked. Acts 1.8. He empowered us. So when we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit does this. He takes residence within us. And gives us that power to become living testimonies of Christ's. Redeeming work. How many of you have been a living testimony this past week? Anyone? What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit profoundly influences the life of a believer. There are several ways that his influence is shown in us. John 6, 63, he gives life. You see, life is, we're talking about a spiritual life. 
Your physical existence doesn't contribute to that life. The words that I have spoken to you are spiritual, John 6 says. They are life. It brings us spiritual life. The Holy Spirit helps us pray. Have you ever been in a situation and you just, you really didn't know how to pray? I hope it's not in the voting booth. When you get in there, I'm telling you how to pray. Without telling you how to pray. Because I don't do that, Pastor Frank. But he helps us when we don't know what to say. He helps us pray. He prays on our behalf. He makes our requests in accordance with God's will. I, I want to say it like this. Just because we're God's children does not change God's protocol into his presence. Sometimes I think we believe, well, I'm saved, and we just approach God like he's just our friend on the street. One of our buds, one of our homies. He's not your homie. He deserves better than being your homie. He's almighty God. I even thought when I was texting, poor mayor, you shouldn't have came today. I'm on you. When we were messaging back and forth, talking about breakfast, lunch, dinner, or coffee, I thought, man, what would I wear? I'm glad I have a jacket on today when he slipped in here on us. I, you know, it's respect. I've had the opportunity to see W, President W. I was concerned with how I looked and how I presented myself just being in the room. You understand? It's respect. And God is king of all kings. He is our father. He loves us where we are. I get it. But if you think living a sloppy lifestyle, saying a sloppy haphazard prayer moves God, you've been told wrong. There is a protocol to the presence of the king. The reason we even worship the way we do, the Bible says you enter his gates with thanksgiving. He tells us how to get to him. And then once you're in the gates, you enter his courts with praise. The priests would have to stop and wash their hands and offer a blood sacrifice before they were allowed to go into the most holy place where his presence dwelled. They would wear a rope tied around their ankle and they had bells sewn in their garments so they would know if they were dead or not once they got into the most holy place. And they would pull them out by the rope because you had to be pure and holy in his presence. Listen, just because the veil was torn when Jesus died does not mean it negates the protocol into his gates and into his presence. It simply means you don't have to worry about that rope around your ankle any longer because Jesus was your sacrifice and he was perfect. And I think the enemy has worked overtime giving us a deluded view of the awesomeness of your father. Because if you don't respect him and respect his power, you won't believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, you can't conquer the enemy every day in your life. Tell somebody there's a protocol into his presence, I'll wait. I am a little stirred up today, okay? You might sense a little edge to me. Here's why. I have a routine every Sunday morning. And for the past month, my routine has changed. I'm a baseball guy, okay? Not superstitious, but we do things the same way every game, just in case it matters, okay? <laughs> if you wore a cup that hadn't been washed in six months and you win a game, you don't wash the cup. You get what I'm saying? And then I was an umpire. And as an umpire, I did some D2 college ball and some high school. One of the things we learned was 
if the pitcher and catcher were in a groove and really moving the game along, the last thing you say in the fifth inning is, man, we're going to get out of here in an hour and a half. Because the minute that leaves your mouth, the pitcher forgets how to pitch and the catcher lets a ball hit you right between the face mask. Every time. Mark, what does that have to do with you being on edge? Well, let me tell you. Every Sunday, we drive from Flyer Mound usually. And I have a favorite gas station that provides me with a bacon, egg, and cheese croissant. They're soft, they're fresh. And then I'll get something called a ghost, reminiscent of the Holy Ghost. And it gives me energy. And it, and it tastes good. But for the past month, I get there, and the people in there just looking at me, and the, the warming oven is bare. That matters. It matters for my attitude. Thank you. So I've had to eat a power bar, chocolate power bar. You can't wear white pants if you eat a chocolate crunchy power bar in your car driving to church. Trust me. It changes the game for everybody. So I finally stopped at a place this morning. And they had the sausage, egg, and cheese croissant. It was big. So I got one. And... Since they didn't have the bacon, I got me a bacon, egg, and cheese, small breakfast burrito. This is spiritual, y'all. Hang in there. All my church folk, you hang on with me. We're going somewhere important. So I get in the car. They didn't have bananas for Karen. She wanted a banana. But I get in the car. I, I got plenty of napkins because we're driving her car today. And, and I, I start to get ready to open it. She said, oh, are you going to eat that in my car? So I swelled up like a real man. I said, yes. <laughs> well, I had to eat it in the office when we got here. That's the, that don't matter. That's not the point of this. There's a protocol <laughs> into the presence. And we get used to ways of dealing with God. But the point is... We need to recognize him for who he is. Because who he is to you matters for you. Is that all right? And the devil will try to knock you off of your game to frustrate you. But don't get knocked off of your game. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. He breathed that life into Adam. And he breathes spiritual life to us. Where did he come from? Well, John 14, 26 says this. However, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. That's where he comes from. The Father sends him. John 15, 26 when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father will testify on my behalf. That was Jesus talking. But he's been here since the beginning. Genesis 1 and 2, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep water. Listen. The Spirit of God was hovering over the water. He's always been. He always will be. The important question that we sometimes get in a personal struggle with, if we're not raised in church and it's an everyday part of our life, is this. How do I know I have the Holy Spirit? Have you ever had that question? That's a legitimate question. Acts 2.38 is one of the favorite Pentecostal passages. The crowd has seen the Holy Spirit fall like fire. It's the day God introduced the Holy Spirit to his church. 
And the people saw all of these things. And yes, they saw people acting like they were drunk in the middle of the day. They were speaking in a different language. They were happy. They weren't acting normal. And they're saying to Peter, what, what is this? What do we do? And he answered them. And he said this, all of you must turn to God and change the way you think. Or translated to my Bible class, that means repent. And then each of you must be baptized. There's that second step in salvation. In the name of Jesus, so that your sins will be forgiven. And here's the third leg of our salvation. Then you will receive. I right, turn to somebody different and tell them, you will receive. Y'all the best Methodist church I've ever been to in my life. Y'all so... You will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. It does not give a caveat that you have to do anything. You hear me? If you repent and you're baptized, there is a gift waiting for you called the Holy Spirit that you will receive. You hear me? You don't have to work for it. You don't have to learn a language that you don't understand. You don't have to let something take over you and make you bark like a dog. The minute you repented and you were baptized, you were spirit-filled. Am I spirit-filled? Yes, you are. That is the truth. Tongues, prophecy, healings, all of these things are Fruits of having the Holy Spirit in your life, but they are not proof. The proof is found in another scripture, Galatians 5.22. Here's the proof for everyone else to judge. But the spiritual nature produces, listen, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there are no laws against such things like that. Are you spirit-filled today if you've been saved and baptized? Yes, you are. That's great news today. And why did he want you to be spirit-filled? To be a witness To shine a light wherever you go. To be a light in a city. You know the Bible says don't cause your rulers anxiety having to rule over you. Did you know that? That's the scripture. Don't make it hard on them. If we walk in the fruits of the spirit, guess what we're not going to do? We're not going to be knuckleheads making it hard on God's appointed authority to do their part. And guess what happens if they do their part wrong? They answer to him. That's good news. That's how it all works. But we are to show love, joy, peace, patience. And listen, men, that is not weakness. Being a man who can love, show peace, be calm, is not a weakness. It is actually a strength. When you know you're in the Corvette and the Hyundai pulls up beside you, I've learned this and many tickets later, you don't have to race them. They're pulling up on you because they want you to blow them off of the road, Pastor Frank, because you're in the Corvette. And there's some kind of honor when you just run them off the road. (laughs) I have no more warrants, praise God. I may or may not have had about 11 when my wife married me. Listen to this as we prepare to go home today. 2 Timothy verse 1 and 7. God did not give us a cowardly spirit. Some translations say a spirit of fear. 
But he gave us a spirit of power, love, and good judgment. You know, when you say you're not something and then that whole sermon, you sound like you are something. But I'm going to say this. If you make life decisions that matter based on if you like someone or not, instead of the one who best represents your beliefs, you do not have good, sound judgment. He gave us power. Power to what? Not be afraid of whatever comes our way. Power to invoke the authority of the name that marks you. When the enemy comes at you, you have power. It's real power. He gave you the ability to love the way God loves. Even when people do you wrong. You see, Jesus, the Bible says, was always moved with compassion when he would work a miracle. Many times he would look at someone crying out to him, and the word says he was moved with compassion. You see, that's what stirred up that gift in him. If you don't have his love, sometimes we lack that compassion to care and notice the hurting. So I'm going to ask you today, What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? What did He want you to hear that will better your life? That will make you a better person? I'm going to ask you, as I usually do, just to take a moment. Find your personal place. For some, closing your eyes. And just go to that place where you have a moment with God. And ask Him, Father... Show me my heart. Show me where I need to improve. And help me be the light to someone else that you have empowered me to be. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you would. I appreciate your listening. I appreciate you coming today. All of y'all look good. If you go out to eat, eat in Farmersville, support our local businesses. I'm kissing up now. I know some of y'all go to Josie, so that's in the other town, but I won't say it. I won't say that out loud too much. Listen, I want you to have a victorious week. Is that all right? Now, here's what I know. Some of you, You're going to face hard times because life does that. I don't know what it would be, but I know life. And you're going to have opportunities to decide probably every day this week to believe what God says about you or to allow the enemy to cause you to doubt. And my prayer as I end this time together is to pray that God will convince you in your heart who you are to Him because you matter. You hear me? That's the word for you today. You matter. That's why He sent the Holy Spirit. And that's why your enemy has made it such a confusing topic because He matters. He empowers you to know who you are. Is that all right? Let's pray together one time. Father, I just, I bless every person here every person viewing us online. Father, I pray that by your Spirit that He could convince them that they matter to you. That they have value in your eyes. And that they would understand you have put very important safety guards in their life. One of which is the Holy Spirit to encourage, to lift up our faith when we feel weak. And we say thank you for that in Jesus' name.